morning, everyone, and welcome to Christ Episcopal Church in Bloomfield and Glen Ridge, New Jersey. I'm Mother Diana, the rector, and I am pleased that you are here with us on Zoom and Facebook Live, where your bulletin is being posted as a link. I pray that you are restful and peaceful and ready to enter into this first Advent Sunday. Welcome again. Blessed are you, holy and living one. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. As our nights grow longer and our days grow short, we look on these earthly signs light and green branches, and remember God's promise to our world. Christ, our light and our hope will come. Listen to the words of Solomon. 
With you is wisdom, she who knows your works and was present when you made the world. She understands what is pleasing in your sight and what is right according to your commandments. Send her forth from the holy heavens and from the throne of your glory send her, that she may labor at my side and I, that I may learn what is pleasing to you. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, whose blessed Son came into the world that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again and with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. First reading is from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the official officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors Terah and his sons Abraham and Nahor lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in, and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it for us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery and who did these great things in our sight. He protected us all along the way that we went and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we all will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. He said, then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statues and ordinances for them at Shechem. 
hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The second reading is from the book of Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May God's words alone be spoken. May God's words alone be heard. Amen. Amen. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Well, isn't that just a timely message from Jesus? It sounds like it could have come from the Gospel according to Steve Kornacki as much as from the Gospel of Matthew, right? This has been a tumultuous week in an already crazy and difficult year. And it isn't really over. Well, the election is, thankfully. But despite my joy at seeing an expiration date on a carton of milk yesterday in the grocery store that's had a 2021 date on it, we still have a few more weeks to go of 2020. Still millions of people in this country and around the world were focused on a single thing these past few days. And it wasn't whether Tom Brady should be allowed to play football again after Deflategate, no. Or how to get rid of all the Halloween candy with no office to take it to. Now just on that last one, I saw a meme that said, I'll get to 270 this this week before the votes do. Candy and election anxiety are not a good combo. So maybe we should move the elections away from Halloween. And on a more serious note, as if that were not enough, there was the highest level of COVID cases recorded in the United States in a single day. That happened this week too. Something has changed here too at Christ Church, something a bit unexpected if you haven't been worshiping here for a few years. My chasuble and my stole are blue. The church is decorated in blue. There's a wreath with candles, and we sang a verse from O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. So you may be wondering if you stepped into some sort of time warp and got dropped into the Sunday after Thanksgiving, because all this means that we have entered into the liturgical season of Advent. But the truth is, as I've preached about before, the original Advent was seven weeks long changed as late as the 7th century. 
and some Orthodox communities still practicing the longer Advent. And over the past several years, many churches like ours are returning to it as well. The lectionary, the cycle of scripture we use from week to week, has always been an Advent in these weeks after All Saints, but we just ignored it. But that needs to change. That needs to change because Advent is needed especially now. But let's step back a minute because it helps if you haven't been in church in a while, or even if you have, to understand what Advent is and is not. First, Advent is not Christmas. And it should not be relegated to the secular Christmas shopping season that follows Thanksgiving. In fact, Many find it helpful to set our hope on Christ in an Advent state of mind before that insanity happens. Advent is also the beginning of the church year, so while we have to wait a bit to get out of this crazy 2020, the church is already saying goodbye to the old and hello to the new. And like we do with a secular new year, it might not be a bad idea to make a few New Year's resolutions, but I'll get to that in a minute. The reason we need Advent right now is because of what it brings to mind and heart. The hope, promise, and expectancy and joy to be found in the coming of the Word made flesh, the incarnation, the birth of Jesus. But as much as it's all about those things, Advent, four weeks or seven, doesn't begin with scriptures about the birth of Jesus, but about his second coming. These are like the t-shirt I once saw in a boardwalk souvenir shop that had a picture of Jesus on it with the words, Jesus is coming, look busy. These scriptures are basically saying the same thing, so save your money and skip the t-shirt. They were written at a time when, when many were discouraged in the faith, for they had thought that he would return in their lifetimes. And today's gospel from Matthew is no different. In this parable, Jesus likens the kingdom of heaven to a wedding. There were ten bridesmaids. Talk about your crazy big wedding, right? And it says five are wise and five are foolish. That's the only distinction. There's no way to know from outward appearance just by their actions. And even their actions were all basically the same. All went, them went to meet the groom and presumably the bride, one would hope. All fell asleep waiting for the groom who was really, really late. All woke out, up to go out and meet him when he came. The only difference was that some had oil remaining because they brought extra and others had lamps that were going out because they didn't bring enough. And the ones who had oil wouldn't share it. The others went to get more and they end up shut out of the wedding feast with the groom claiming not to know them. Jesus then finishes the parable with that warning, keep awake therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. That's a crazy parable, right? I mean, folks like to talk about bridezillas, but seriously, what is with the groom being so darn late and totally rude? <laughs> of course, as is true of parables and much of scripture, Taking them literally will have us missing the point. The groom is Jesus. The bridesmaids and his, are his followers. The feast is the kingdom of heaven. Or in the Cliff Notes version, being a follower of Jesus isn't a part-time thing. You have to be all in all the time because you never know when he's going to come back. Here's the thing, though. He already has. I remember once sitting in a weekday service led by a friend of mine. I might have told you this story before, I'm not sure. I was in seminary and, and she was an associate rector at this particular parish. And the service was kind of like our mass on the grass. You know, after the homily, there was an informal discussion about the gospel reading. And, and one elderly woman, a few pews ahead of me, she raised her hand up and said, do you believe there will be a second coming? My friend looked at me and said, so let's ask the seminarian. Seriously? I mean, I, th I thought she was my friend. Anyway, I said, yes, I do believe it. But it's already happened. It's happening today and will happen again tomorrow. Jesus is coming, that is true, but he's already here with us. We proclaim this in our mystery of faith, right? 
Do we recognize him in our midst? In a few weeks, the lectionary will give us the gospel passage from Matthew, the same gospel where Jesus tells us in yet another end times narrative, because, you know, it's Advent. He tells us where to find him. He is in the hungry, the stranger, the poor, the sick, and the imprisoned. And so the thing about this gospel we heard this morning about the bridesmaids and Jesus should really be told this way. There were ten bridesmaids with oil for their lamp, When the groom was late, they went out to find him and realized that he was always near with those who had no place to take shelter, who had no oil for their lamp, who had no food waiting them at a grand feast. So together with Jesus, they went to the doors of the wedding feast and threw them wide open. The table was made longer and oil burned brightly and all who hungered were filled. That's really the good news, the gospel. That's what it's all about. And it is an Advent call to us in our time. For we live in a world bitterly divided, a nation mourning over the pain of loss in a pandemic that has claimed hundreds of thousands of loved ones. And there are voices crying out for justice as hatred and bigotry infect the souls of so many. This is a time of lament in our country and in the world. And as a people of faith, we know a lot about lament. We find it particularly in our Psalter, that collection of beautiful psalms written by an exiled people who yearned for being known by God, who wept over what had become of their people, who cried out for justice, for restoration, for new life. As we lament, we must remember that we have to look for Jesus in our midst. But we must also be Jesus in the world. If we are ever to heal our divisions, reconcile with our sisters and brothers, and together build lasting bridges of hope and peace. And to begin, we must be Advent people. The ones rooted in the hope and promise of the incarnation. The ones who know that when a people walk in darkness, there a great light will come. The ones who know that where to find the proverbial bridegroom in the least, the last, the lonely, and the lost. It may seem like it has been a long night in our country. But if we remember that we aren't waiting for Jesus, he is here with us. There is nothing we cannot do. And so it, as it is our church new year, let's make a few resolutions. Let's resolve that we will seek Christ in the world, not only in our churches. Let us resolve that we will be Christ in the world, meeting people where they are. Let us resolve that we will share Christ with the world, being a healing presence amidst pain. This is who we are, who we are called to be, who we promise to be in our baptismal covenant. But to do it, we must remember that we cannot change what is if we are unwilling to hear others, especially those with whom we most disagree. The way forward is truly to walk in love, as Christ loved us. That is not just what the priest says as an invitation to communion. It is our very life. The bitter divides within our families, within our neighbors, and across our nation will not heal unless we prioritize love and relationship over opinion and full agreement. In last week's gospel, Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. He did not say, Blessed are all those who agree with one another. You are a peacemaker if you bring two sides together, not if you expect everyone to come to you. This is hard stuff. This is hard stuff. Truth be told, being a follower of Jesus isn't an easy journey, but it's the most rewarding, the most life-giving, and the most joy-filled for all of us who were baptized into his death and life. And when we are weary... When our inner light of Christ is starting to fade, we come here to have our oil replenished, to be nourished in the Jesus that is present whenever we are gathered and in the Eucharist. This has been hard for us these many months separated. 
We know that spiritual communion with one another and in the Eucharist in this virtual environment has been life-giving, but we all lament for what we do not have and yearn for the physical presence, for the ability to receive the body and blood of Jesus and be in fellowship with one another as we are in him. Today, across this entire diocese, we are building that bridge across the digital divide. Today, I will answer the call of our bishop to join with priests in other churches to safely consecrate enough hosts to bring communion to as many who want to receive it. Like our ashes to go, I'll be joined by two lay leaders out in the park for an hour today following our coffee hour, and I will distribute the consecrated, consecrated host to all who come by. We will make the rest of the hosts available for safe distribution to those who are homebound. I'll talk more about this during coffee hour and at the peace, but this is one way for us to be united one to another in Jesus Christ. So we are giving strength for our common journey of faith. The other way, the other way is to pray. Pray for our loved ones, but also for those with whom we disagree, for they are children of God, our sisters and brothers. We are in Advent, and so many live in fear, in darkness, and in despair. We have to be the people of light we are called to be, for his light, his light will overcome darkness. We have to be the people of love we are called to be, for his love will defeat hate. This is how Jesus will know us. That is how he, we, he will know us when we encounter him in the world, by his light shining in our hearts and by our reconciling love in his name. Let us now all work together to heal this divided nation, to bring peace where there is war, love where there is hate, healing where there is pain, and hope where there is despair. Amen. Let us stand together with Christians throughout the centuries and proclaim the basic creed of the Church. We believe in one God, the Mother, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Mother, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the mother. Through her all things were made. For us and for our salvation, she came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the mother. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, who proceeds from the mother, who with the mother and the son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Welcoming God's reign of righteousness and mercy, let us pray with people of every time and place. <clears throat> Awaken your church to be ready to respond when Christ meets us 
in the cries of those in need. We lift up the church's mission of care through Episcopal relief and development and other agencies. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for natural resources like oil, coal, trees, sun, water, and wind. Help us to use them wisely. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Answer the cries of your people and nations caught in war and destruction. Hold in your care all veterans and their families. Ease the burden of tough memories and bring restoration and wholeness. We pray now for peace in our neighborhoods of Bloomfield and Glen Ridge. God, in your mercy. Shine your merciful and healing light on the despairing places of our minds and souls. <clears throat> bring hope in the midst of danger, depression, and illness. We also pray now for those on our parish prayer list. God, in your mercy. Bless those who prepare for marriage or, have, or who have been married in this place. Strengthen all bonds of friendship and relationship in our community. Give us joy in life together. God, in your mercy. Keep us alert for Christ's coming, sustained by the promise that we will be reunited with all the faithful who have died. Thank you for their lives of witness. God, in your mercy. We pray also for Jimmy Beverly, for Jane and Joe Durham. We pray for our country and all those elected to lead us on both sides of the aisle, and those you now name either silently or aloud. God of the present moment, God who in Jesus stills the storm and soothes the frantic heart, bring hope and courage to all who wait or work in uncertainty. Bring hope that you will make them the equal of whatever lies ahead. Bring them courage to endure what cannot be avoided, for your will is health and wholeness. You are God, and we need you. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Peace Zoom, peace Facebook. Make temporary math. Peace, 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 peace. Peace, everyone. Um, good morning. Good morning. What a week we have had. Uh, you should have received this week a letter, an email letter from me along with your online pledge card. Several of you have already uh, pledged, and that's a wonderful thing. Um, please, please take the time to do that and prayerfully discern where God is leading you. If you did not receive it and you think you're on our email list, please reach out to our office. The email address for our office is on the back of, well, the, it's in your bulletin, the last page of the main worship part of the bulletin, uh, and just email us. But before you do that, please check your spam folder, because oftentimes people email us and say they're not on the list. They are, and then they look in spam and there we are. We try not to take offense about that, by the way. Um, but uh, please check that. It's very important. It's very important to the spiritual place you call your parish home. Uh, so please respond. Those who are not on our email and do not get email, they only those will receive the hard copy versions of the stewardship uh, letter and the uh, pledge. So please, please be certain to do that. Um, tonight at 6 o'clock, 
uh, is the beginning of an Advent series that I'll be doing weekly, regardless of whether here, we're here on Sunday. Um, it's just a Bible study of the lections for that day. Sometimes I'll put stuff out on, a, a, on the website, and I will let you know about those. Um, when you know resources, but mostly just be sure to read the lections for the day. Uh, the, tonight we will be focusing a bit on why these end times stories are present in Advent and the seven week Advent. So please join us if you like, the information is there for you. Uh, there's the Thanksgiving um, that's coming up in a couple of weeks. This is a time of great need. I know this church is, is the most generous group of people and I pray that you can go online to these different organizations, the food pantries and animal shelters, and give as, as you are able to help them, particularly at this time of year. Today, the diocesan communion I mentioned, um, I'll be consecrating 100 extra hosts, and then I will be across the street where we usually do last chance mass on the grass, um, or around there. Uh, you can park right over here in the, in the well, here, I don't know if it's coming out that way, but over in the municipal lot across the street, that's the easiest place to park and just walk over, you'll find us. We'll be there for one hour following coffee hour, and then whatever is left over, we will come back, and the lay leaders and others will, will figure out a way to safely distri distribute them to those who are homebound. We are not to walk in. This is not a time for lay Eucharistic ministers. The bishop is clear about that. We're not to walk into homes, but we can certainly drop them off to different places. Um, and so we will be doing that today along with uh, churches all across the diocese. Sadly, for whatever reason, my Sunday paper just disappeared. I think there's a book club uh, thing coming up. In fact, yes, there it is. Uh, they're reading. And um, we're asking for volunteers if you'd like. We're interested in possibly doing a virtual pageant. Um, the last couple of years, because we have so many infants and toddlers who aren't yet of the Mary and Joseph age, um, we've been doing an all parish pageant where we all participate. And we're interested in seeing if you'd like to do that too. And if you would, in the Sunday paper, there's information about that and letting us know. Otherwise, uh, we will just skip it this year. So, uh, and of course, uh, the seven week advent, and that just disappeared off my, that's all right, we're gonna just be going to um, birthdays and anniversaries. My, uh, this is what happens when you rely entirely on technology, sometimes it just disappears on you. So, this week we will, we will pray for those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. For those who are celebrating an anniversary of marriage this week, O God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and the Church. Send your blessing upon these wedded partners who celebrate the anniversary of the promises made to each other and grant them their, your grace that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their lives together may be a witness to your love and forgiveness, and that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And for those celebrating a birthday, watch over your children, O God, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their heart, may the peace which passes all understanding abide all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Two other things, uh, we do have a virtual offering plate each week and a link to that is being placed in the Zoom and Facebook Live. If you, out of your abundance, are able to offer something to the glory of God and in support of the mission and ministry of this parish, please take a moment uh, to do that today. And also, this is the last service we will be doing in the month of November. We will see you again on the first Sunday, first two Sundays, of December. December will be jam-packed with some additional things that we will be doing, so stay tuned. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image, male and female, and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death, and to reveal the riches of your grace, you look with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take Eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and again he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves as we have cross. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth 
and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you've made. In the fullness of time, bring us with all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray together. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Let us say together our closing prayer. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest and grow in the spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer 
and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in hum great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. May he whose second coming in power and great glory we await make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. Amen. May you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer at his second advent be rewarded with unending life. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Christ, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.
Let's go forth to proclaim the good news in God and Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. This concludes our service this morning. We look forward to wel welcoming you again to our church on the first Sunday in December. Until then, may God bless you, all those you love, all those you pray for, now and in the days to come. <laughs>